everybody, this is Finish Friday. Yes, this is casual Finish Friday. I have on a baseball cap today. So um, this this is, if you, if you were gonna see me at an estate sale or a garage sale or at my favorite uh, place on Summer Avenue here in Memphis, Tennessee looking for antiques, this is exactly what I'm gonna wear. I'm gonna have on a baseball cap. So um, today I'm really excited for two reasons. One, it's Friday, woohoo! The other thing is we have a special um, bundle that we've put together that if you purchase for any of your projects $50 or more on the Amy Howard at Home website, you are going to receive free gold leaf and gilding size. So let's take a look at that, what I'm telling you, and I'm gonna be showing you today all things leaf. Of course, we have a silver leaf, a copper leaf, and a gold leaf. And they're, depending on the color that you're gonna be working on, whether you're going into cool grays, blacks, taupes, which silver can look great on. Also, copper leaf can look great on almost anything. I use it on a lot of things like glass um, that I'm actually gilding. And then your gold, this will be included in your bundle this week. So if you buy $50 or more, we're gonna give you a free size and a free gold leaf and in gold, not copper. All right, so that makes it very exciting. And it, I know when I've talked to a lot of people, they'll say, I'm really scared of gold leaf. I, I don't like it, I'll just use some gold wax. I'm just gonna tell you, you will never get the look of something like this Torchere if you don't gild it. Look at the detail on that, guys. Now, this is something from the 18th century. It's done in 23 karat gilt, but how it's, how it's been worn, how it's been laid down, you'll never get this look with a gold wax. It has to be laid with the leaf and then you can come back with some steel wool and wear it down. And it looks absolutely beautiful. All right, so the other thing is that I want you to realize when you're working with size, S-I-Z-E, which is the, um, basically it's the glue or the adhesive that is made specifically for gold leaf, silver leaf, copper leaf, variegated leaf, it's made for leaf, to get it to adhere to almost any surface. So you can use the size and the leaf on uh, fabric, you can use it on glass, you can use it on furniture that you're redoing. Um, so let's just take a, a look at a few of these. So these are um, some actual antique finials that I have that have been gilded that kind of give you some inspiration. But you can also use it, you can use size with stamps and create looks like this to be able to put on fabric. You can use leaf on glass. I just took the end of a pencil eraser, dipped it into my size, put it on my glass, let it come to tack, and created this adorable little champagne flute. You, of course, can put it on silverware. You can do it on seashells. Anything that you want to be able to create a beautiful gilded surface. Here we used the size with one of our stencils from my sister company, a maker studio, on this pillow so you can use it on fabric. And look at this. This was actually just done on a glass vase with some painter's tape and some size and leaf. So it's endless. Once you kind of see the versatility of gilding, you see the ease of it, it can transform your furniture. And that's what I wanna be able to teach you today. Part of the reason why I wanted to be able to offer you some free gold leaf and some free size is because I want you to try it. I don't want you to be afraid of it and I want you to see how easy it is to be able to use. So. As always, we're coming to you at 12 noon Central, Central Standard Time in Memphis, Tennessee on Friday. And if you are watching and it's live, welcome. And please ask questions. Send me some love. Um, the algorithms with Facebook, it requires us to be able to reach as many as people as possible um, that we are interacting. So if, you, if, if you're tuning in and you like Finish Fridays and you want me to continue teaching you, just send me some hearts and some love, but I also like to know where you're coming from. Um, I also would love to know if you've ever gilded before, 
um, and share some pictures. Guys, I am so inspired by people that are on our um, Amy Howard at home um, before and after group because we're able to see our successes, we're able to share um, our fears, and I love how somebody will ask a question on, what should I do to this piece? And then they'll get so many people commenting and supporting them um, because we're all kind of, I say, cut out of the same cloth and the fact that you're creative, you're makers, you wanna be able to make things, um, and you love painting, rescuing, and restoring furniture. So, um, if you have any questions, you can ask them live. So, I wanna show you um, also a little tip on getting a look on your furniture pieces. I've actually got a piece of furniture here I'm gonna show you. But I also wanna show you something where you don't have to gild the entire thing and it's just a little bit of highlight that you can use on pieces that are a little bit more carved. All right, so here is um, a piece of trim. If most of you know me, I work on trim pieces because as being a furniture designer, I'm in a manufacturer for almost 27 years, we would do finished samples for our clients and uh, this is a, a, a kind of an example of a finished piece. We would cut them and send them off to the clients and then keep it there with that piece to do it um, as it would go through manufacturing process. But look how you see just a little bit of leaf. This is really, really important in the fact that when you are gilding, you don't have to gild the whole thing. Some of it can act like it's maybe been worn off over a period of time. If you've got a really grody, um, worn finish, this one is just slightly, it's not gonna have perfect solid leaf on it. And notice the other thing that I did. I just highlighted a little bit of it. You wanna make sure the composition of your leaf is really pretty. So we've added some new lights. Hopefully the lighting is just a little bit better for you. Uh, we listened to your request, so hopefully it's a little bit better and you're able to see a little bit clearer. All right, so let me show you how to get a light look of leaf like this without getting it really solid. This is another piece um, that I have worked on. This is a, um, a corbel that I've actually done a, um, one of my milk painted finishes on with our Toscana milk paint. But on this, if you wanna be able to get this very worn look, you wanna make sure that you're not applying solid size. Remember size, S-I-Z-E, again. It's the adhesion, the glue. You cannot use a regular glue, guys. You're gonna have to use size. I'm gonna dip this in here like this. I just wanna make sure that it gets all over my brush. I'm gonna offload it just a little bit. This is just a regular sable artist brush. Now, on this, what I did is I want you to hold your brush like this. Don't hold it like you would be painting like this. You're gonna hold it to the side, and it's a rolling kind of action. Watch. So I'll just roll it, just kind of here and there, on the tips of it, where it would have um, basically a suggestion of where the leaf would have been. Maybe a few hundred years ago, the leaf would have been all over this acanthus. This is called an acanthus leaf. But we just want to be able to have a little bit of the accents. You know, I'm gonna load this up again. I'm gonna dip this artist brush into my size, get it everywhere. I'm rolling it. Again, I don't want you brushing it like this. I want you to roll it. So I'm laying my brush to the side like this, so that way it's just getting highlighted on the tops of that. All right, so now if I wanted a solid stripe here, I would come back and lay some tape on this side, and then I would come back and brush it on completely like that so it was more solid. I'm going for a looser, highlighted look this time. Now, look what I'm doing. I'm gonna take one of these and I'm actually gonna fan it because here's a very important tip. You're gonna have to make sure that this size that we've just applied comes to what we call tack, T-A-C-K. Tack is to where it's almost dry, but it still has the adhesion quality that is going to allow us to lay our leaf down. So I know a lot of people are like, oh my gosh, I'm so nervous. I've seen people work with leaf. I just don't think I can do it. You can. I want you to see today that you absolutely can. All right, so now the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna check it with my ring finger. My ring finger is the weakest muscle in my hand. So when I touch it, it'll have a tendency to pull the skin on my finger just a little bit, and I'll be able to tell if it's come to tack. Now, as a rule, depending on the humidity, 
depending on how hot it is. We've had some incredible weather here in Memphis, so the humidity is low. The temperature is in the mid 80s, which is amazing for July. So um, I'm gonna take my book. Um, when you get a book of leaf, you're gonna have 25 pages. And they're, all those pages are going to have, this one's kind of old, I've gotten that messed up, I'm gonna move that out of the way. Um, all of them are gonna have tissue in between them like this, so they're sandwiched in between. So as a rule, depending on the size of the piece that I'm working on, I'll cut it up, but I'll leave the spine in place. This is the book, just like a, a spine to a book, but these are all loose leaves like this. So I'm gonna pull this just back, holding it all together, look at this. So I'm gonna be holding the entire book like this so it won't fall apart. You've got to go up just a little bit. This is about an inch and a half, so that way the leaf is not all gonna fall out. I want you to get used to not touching the leaf because as I take you through um, your gilding journey later when we start acid etching maybe sterling silver or copper leaf um, or 23 karat gold, I don't want you touching the leaf. I want you to be using the tissue and respect the leaf because the oil from our hands can have a tendency to change the color of the leaf um, before we go through the um, antique waxing process. All right, so I'm gonna turn this around and I'm gonna lay this on top of where we laid that size. And as I do that, I'm gonna pull this tissue out and I'm gonna put it aside, okay? So the entire book, got a little bit on my hand, the entire book is laying there and I'm gonna burnish it. I'm gonna burnish this in here and there's quite a bit of pressure so I am really pressing in because I want to make sure that that is attached, okay? Now, don't worry about it. We're only looking for a little bit of highlights here, and this isn't about solid gilding. So I'm going to take another piece. I'm going to pull my tissue up, and you want to make sure that your hands don't get sticky. Pull this back, lay that leaf down, pull that bottom sheet out, and then burnish it again. Is everybody with me? Are there any questions? Not yet. I'm so sorry that I was not available last week to do Finish Friday. I was at the Haven Bloggers Conference in Atlanta, and I was honored to be the closing speaker there to um, about 450 amazing bloggers. So it was a real treat for all of us. Um, all right, so I'm just gonna get some of this loose area off. Remember, we just highlighted, we don't want a solid coverage here. I'm just wanting to be able to show a little bit of detail. Some people are going, oh my gosh, Amy, you're wasting a lot. Can I save this? Absolutely, you can save it. You can put it in a little Tupperware container next time you do a gilding project. You can just take that off um, and use it again. So now I'm gonna take my chip brush and I'm gonna start cleaning this off. I'm gonna go in the direction that I actually laid the leaf. And this kind of gilding um, is kind of a, a grody gilding where we're just wanting some details. This is a little bit different than when we do it at more of a solid gilding. So now I'm gonna go against it and I wanna get all this loose stuff off. Look at that. Mm. Is that not beautiful? Yum, yum, yum. Okay, I'm gonna clean this off. When you are getting ready to go in your waxing process, I need to make sure that you get all this off and that you don't have a whole lot of loose um, leaf everywhere. All right, so now we're gonna fan it just a little bit, get all that off. And now I want you to come back with a little bit of steel wool. And I just want you to wear it. We're wanting a suggestion that maybe at one time that this leaf was solid on here, but over a few hundred years, it's all kind of worn off and you've got just little highlights of it. Gosh, that's so gorgeous. If you're just now tuning in, we have a special bundle for you this week that if you buy $50 worth of product, and you know that will give you free shipping, I'm going to include a free large adhe adhesive gilding size as well as a entire book of gold leaf because I want you to try this. I know once you do, you're gonna be addicted. Um, let's take a, a glance again. Here's a torchere that was done with more solid gilding. 
It's not um, the distressed gilding like I just showed you, but you could do it that way. But see how it can literally transform um, a simple little piece that is like a torchier. And I wanna show you a piece of furniture that I have gotten at my favorite little antique mall. And right before we went live, this is a little console, but right before we went live, I laid down some size. Can you see how it's shiny? When you've got size, after you've applied it, it's going to be shiny. It's going to allow you to be able to see where you've placed it. So you're gonna to have to have good lighting so you can see what you're doing. But I wanna just show you, let's look at this area over here. Now, I'm gonna take a little bit of my size. I'm just dipping my artist brush in here. And I want you to see how I, how I will work on striping something. So I'll rest my wrist down on it so I can position the brush and just kind of fan it out and then follow it around like this. As a rule, I won't do taping because I've actually painted this piece with milk paint. So I just steady, steady my hand like this, resting it on that piece. I'll come back, I wanna make sure there's no holidays. If you have holidays, that's the area where you didn't get the size and the leaf will not stick. But here's the good news. After you gild it and you see you've got some holidays, you can come back and you gild it a second time. You act like you didn't even gild it the first time. You can put the size on top of the holidays where you missed and you're good to go, all right? So this area right here, you can see where it's got a little bit shinier as far as where I laid that size down and how it's gonna give you some detail. Now I did it more solid. Let me get my leaf. I don't think I've got some scissors. Yes, I do. So now, I wanna be able to show you. I'll take some scissors and I'm just gonna cut this because I don't wanna use this entire sheet. But I'm doing just a little bit of gilding on details like this, there's no need in having the entire book. So I'm just gonna pull this up. I've been using this, so I'm kind of in process. Remember, one book is gonna give you 25 sheets. So look how I've pulled that back. I'm gonna hold it with this other hand right here, and I'm gonna lay it down. Hold it with the left hand, I'm right-handed. Pull this tissue out. Don't let that stay tucked under there. And look how I've got the all of these uh, tissues, whatever's left on this book is all here. I'm using that entire book to be able to burnish this. All right, so I'm gonna lift it up. Look at that. Gosh, once you do that, now look at this. If I wasn't gilding this, it would just be, which I love, it would just be this simple um, finish. Now, I haven't done any wax or anything to it, but guys, I want it to look more like this. I want to be able to add this gold detail to it. Isn't that yummy, yummy, yummy? Um, on top of my adorable little console that I got for $10. And it has a marble top. And it does have a drawer. But I don't have it on here just to be able to show you. All right, so I'm going to lay this down again. Pull the tissue out. Burnish it. I'm holding this entire book. Holding it with my left hand so it's not moving. And I'm right-handed. So I am burnishing. I am pressing that in with my hand, and I've got a little area over here. I'm gonna do the same thing. All right, I'm gonna lay one more down and then I'm gonna clean this off. If you aren't part of our before and after group, guys, please, join, be part of a community of people that love restoring furniture, love using our products, and you'll be able to learn so much from them. All right, so now I'm gonna take my, my chip brush again and clean that off. See how easy that is, guys? Is that easy? So, so fun. Now, of course, I could work my way all the way down the um, this little console. Get your excess off. And this doesn't have to be perfect. I prefer it's not 
it's usually not perfect uh, because it makes it look a little bit more distressed. And then I want to be able to come back with some steel wool. Some people will ask me, um, do I um, do I use sandpaper? The answer is no. After you have gilded, don't use sandpaper. It's a situation where um, it will scratch it. I would prefer for you to use just a 4 aught steel wool, so that way you can rub that through and wear that back, just like I did that other trim piece. And um, now I'm ready to come back with my light antique wax. I'll come back on top of it with my dark antique wax and maybe add some dust of ages. All that layering, all that process of building that up is gonna make this look like an authentic looking little antique console. Um, but even more than that, you're going to be able to enjoy the bragging rights. I want you to see the versatility of gold leaf, silver leaf, copper leaf, and working with a simple product like size that's going to allow you to put that on glass and fabric and wood, striping out, um, maybe using it on some silverware, some seashells, some artwork, the whole nine yards. Once you get used to it, once you see how easy it is, I promise it can transform the way you do your finishes. Have a fantastic weekend, everybody. I'm going to keep my baseball cap on, and I will see you at the estate sales. Have a great weekend. Bye.